What do you make of this? Well, as you said, I mean, there's, it's, it's sort of amping up the warning, right? I mean, one of the biggest issues here has to do, well, there's two main ones, right? I mean, it's not just the political sort of chaos and dysfunction, um, which is not a surprise or news to anyone in Washington who's seen these budget battles play out and these fights over the debt ceiling and now government shutdown threats routinely. Um, you know, nothing, nothing new. But we're in a situation now where the debt trajectory is a lot different. Um, you know, there were a number of years where things were looking pretty good. Um, um, and of course, since the pandemic, debt, debt has jumped up, and unexpectedly this year, you know, deficits twice as much as they were last year. So I think the one other really interesting issue that they flagged is affordability, right? And so there's different ways of looking at that. You can look at debt to GDP, which is obviously going up, but with interest rates as high as they are, interest costs are going up, right? That's eating up a bigger share of the budget. So a couple of factors here. It can't just be blamed on um, you know dysfunction in Washington. It, it definitely does have to do with kind of cha- shifting fundamentals, underlying fundamentals of the debt situation. So what's the point of double secret probation instead of <laughs> just know. a downgrade, which we seem to be begging for? Yeah, that's a really good question. I guess you'd have to ask Moody's. I'm really, yeah. I'm really not sure, but um, I mean, I, I think that the timing is certainly very interesting, um, as you pointed out, a week before uh, Congress has to come together sure and figure is. this out. It almost feels like they were pushing Speaker McCarthy to get mm-hmm. something done. It now feels like they're pushing Speaker Johnson mm-hmm. to get something done. And Are you suggesting this is political somehow? Well, they're saying it themselves. Without effective fiscal policy measures to reduce government spending or increase revenues, mm-hmm. they expect fiscal deaths to remain very large, significantly weakening debt affordability. Yes, exactly. And they talked about last time the governance in Dysfunction. Washington. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. You can't hide from it. Dan, what are you hearing about when you talk to people in Congress about actually keeping the government open? I think that has to be something that Moody's needs to see first, right, if they're not going to go right. full-on downgrade. Right. Well, I think if you talk to the Mitch McConnells of the world, obviously, they're going to tell you we need to keep the government open. It's an imperative. It's part of our job as uh, representatives. Mm -hmm. Uh, You talk to some of the folks on the House side, they are very serious about cutting the deficit, reining in spending. This is a very big uh, political issue for certain members of the House uh, Republican Conference, especially. So you, where do you uh, find common ground? And, and that uh, common ground seems to be shrinking uh, below our feet here in Washington. Mm-hmm. So it's a question of timing. It's a question of pressure. And perhaps this uh, gets them to an agreement, uh, this Moody's uh, outlook gets them to an agreement uh, to kick the can a little bit further down the road. But mm-hmm. this issue is certainly not going away anytime soon. Well, yeah, as we count down seven days here, here's what the House Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries, had to say about Republican efforts on a continuing resolution that would cut spending. Let's listen. A continuing resolution that is at the fiscal year 2023 levels is the only way forward because that's the status quo. Members of the House Republican Conference have no idea what a laddered CR means, what it represents, or how it would possibly be implemented, let alone the American people. The notion of a laddered CR is another extreme a uh, right-wing policy joyride that is reckless and would only crash and burn the federal government. It's a non-starter. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff they're sitting back watching at Moody's and you wonder why we get a headline like today. There's no path. Sarah Chamberlain from the Main Street uh, Republican Partnership told us yesterday she thinks they might be able to pull something out in the end, but it's not looking promising. She didn't to sound as confident That's as she did true. when Speaker McCarthy put that final CR. And, and predicted floor. that we would avoid a shutdown. Maybe that's not even the point, though, because we're going to have a continuing resolution and then go into a new year uh, with a, a potentially worse situation and an across the board 1% cut. It sounds like we deserve what happened today. Do you agree? Well, I think when you look at Moody's language and you look at the situation, you almost see. Uh, the ghost of the McCarthy speakership somewhere in there because, Hmm. you know, he lost his speakership essentially by pulling back from the brink. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, you look at the Moody's language, you look at the situation right now, they're trying to put together a spending plan. Um, There is a little bit of a sense that they need to take this more seriously. There's a bit of a push perhaps from Moody's, if I could say that. But I think that what uh, ultimately is going to happen is up to a very restive Republican conference in the House right now, and whether they're able to come to some sort of agreement that's not going to cost a Speaker Mike Johnson his speakership is a very open question at this point. Well, on one hand, it makes Mike Johnson and some of these hard-right Republicans that have a lot to say about fiscal responsibility, this 
feeds right into a lot of that rhetoric. Sure. But at the same time, what does he do with this Israel bill, with this pay-for that many are calling political well, because... It increases the deficit. Because the CBO says well, it actually increases like the deficit. Um, how does he... How does he walk that tightrope? I mean, I think clearly it's a, it, it's extraordinarily tricky, right? I mean, in any sort of negotiation, you have to make both sides feel like they've gotten something out of it. So that's going to be the trick here. But right, I think the, the it's just become clear that the that the pay for, as you said, you know, cutting funding for the IRS. I mean, that's not um, it's it's just not it's just not going to fly, and it doesn't actually it doesn't actually save any money, as everyone said. It's cost money. I mean, I think that um, I think that what we're hearing from um, you know we saw today the statement from the Treasury Department from Deputy Secretary Adiyama was yeah. interesting. I mean, he's making the point that, look, the Biden administration has put forward um, plans to sort of reduce deficits, fiscally responsible proposals, and he's really putting it on Republicans uh, for not sort of meeting them in the middle, so to speak, and finding ways to come to an agreement. So I do think that there's certainly more pressure on them, and they, uh, that's, that's what Speaker Johnson has to figure out. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, in the throes of all this breaking news, we haven't had a chance to acknowledge the fact uh, that it's Veterans Day, yep. uh, which is important to us here uh, on balance of power and here in the Washington Bureau at Bloomberg. As a matter of fact, uh, our resident Marine who's at the desk with us here, Dan Flatley, <laughs> look at this, held a little celebration in the newsroom to say happy 248th birthday to the United States Marine Corps. So Semper Fi, Dan, we're delighted that we can share that with you today. A little picture of that pretty cake you had out there in the newsroom. Thank you very much. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, uh, obviously you want to remember all those who served our country um, ahead of Veterans Day tomorrow, it's, uh, and I was very grateful that, that you all let me bring in a cake and have a little <laughs> celebration and have a little bit of fun with it, too. So um, thank you very much.